on this episode of Burton Balls. Yeah! to another episode of Burton Bolts. Um, today's episode is of course building something um, out of what's on the table here and it's uh, something that I saw on YouTube and I thought man I want to build that. Um, there's hundreds of designs on YouTube, there's, there's like, thousands probably of videos about how to make these things um, so nothing special about mine. I thought it would be something fun to build in the garage, something fun for uh, you to build with uh, your son or daughter if that's uh, something she's into on the table here, uh, we've got a couple of little pipes and fittings and uh, you name it. We're going to be using uh, not all of these things, um, I bought a little bit extra, I wasn't actually too sure what exactly I was going to use, so I just bought a few extra fittings um, and we've been toying around with the various designs uh, as to how the trigger is going to work, how we're going to fill it with, uh, with air, that type of thing. Uh, by the way, come back for that video, that's going to be really good. We've come up with a design that I think is going to work. Um, it's a little bit of a modification or an alteration uh, to you know, YouTube. This is going to be our basic design. Um, the barrel, of course, is this section. And then we're going to use um, one of these. It's a uh, the valve off the top of a fire extinguisher. Um, it actually, there we go. It's just that piece. So I went down to one of the local uh, local suppliers and uh, picked myself up one of these. Um, that's going to be over there. At the back of the cannon we're going to use this thing. It's um, a two inch or one inch, no one inch. It's a one inch uh, PVC valve, water valve I suppose it is. Um, and that's going to go here at the end. Um, and then behind our valve then we're going to have um, whatever nozzle we want, like a I think it's called a Schrader valve, it's the, the little valve that you pump up uh, a motor cast tire with. Or in our case, we're going to have one of these. So I can take my compressor, uh, this is the, the lead for my compressor, and I can then just plug it in to the back of our gun and let the compressor do all the hard work. So that's the overall design. Now, there's something uh, quite interesting about this design. And that's how the storage or the air storage works. We all appreciate it's stored, and it's actually stored inside the barrel around the actual the part where the where the, the t-shirt goes into. So we're going to use two sections of pipe. We're going to use this uh, 75 millimeter section of pipe, um, and the actual barrel is going to be this 50 millimeter piece of pipe. Um, that's where we'll shove our t-shirt into. So that 50 millimeter piece of pipe is actually going to be in the middle. There's the actual barrel. Now our t-shirt will go inside here, uh, all scrambled up nice and neatly. So the way that this works, and, and this is, I had to think about this and I was wondering, um, how the heck do these guys store pressure inside the barrel and then with a the valve on the outside, they somehow magically let all the air escape and, and the t-shirt escapes with it. So um, after a little bit of thinking and uh, watching some, some videos, um, I saw that they used, it's kind of like a little puck um, or a little, a little I don't know, no, it looks like a hockey puck really, an ice hockey puck. Um, and it goes inside over there. Now, the way this thing works is we pump it up and uh, it's gonna take this little hockey puck and it's gonna push it forward up to the edge of our internal barrel. And then all of this is going to fill up with air. When we close this valve and then we release the pressure uh, using our fire extinguisher head, then all of a sudden the pressure behind um, this, this hockey pack that, that's holding it forward, the pressure disappears. Um, and then the pressure over here kind of pushes the hockey puck backwards. It opens up the inside of the, the barrel and then it shoots the t-shirt out. Well, in theory, that's what it does. Um, whether this works or not, uh, you know, there's a, there's a couple of guys on YouTube that have got it to work before. Um, it's the first time I'm doing it, so, you know, hopefully it works. That's the basic design. Um, let's get building. A few of the guys on YouTube have used 75 uh, millimeter pipe, which is what I've gone with. But the length, uh, you know, people make it anywhere from one meter long to almost half a meter long. 
and I haven't really been sure what to go for, so we're just going to go in between. 750 millimeters long. Okay, we need to cut this off. Uh, hey, remember that trick from a few days ago with a piece of paper around the pipe? We're going to do that now. Uh, I need a piece of paper. Lining those two ends up. And then drawing a cokey line all the way around. There we go. We've got our perfect line. Time to cut it off. The guy at the shop um, that sold these fittings, he said it's probably a good idea to give them a light sand. Um, I suppose it's uh, just going to provide a surface for the glue to kind of stick to nicely. Here's a little tech tip, uh, when you're gluing sort of your fittings together, um, you don't want them to leak, of course, we're trying to hold the pressure inside here. So something that you can do is once you've applied the glue onto either both pieces, um, you're going to firmly push them together and then you're going to give it a small rotation, about a quarter turn. What that does is it ensures that the glue kind of seats itself all the way around inside the fitting um, and then it doesn't leak, which is, which is good. Looks like a lollipop. <laughs> Doesn't smell like one though. Make sure you get this process correct because once you've put them together, they don't come apart again. Oof. These fumes are quite, uh, quite strong. I'm going to push them together. Like that, and then uh, give it a quarter turn, and it should be good to go. What you do need to do is let the glue set overnight. The glue does bind uh, pretty quickly, but it only it only sets over a couple of hours. So keep that in mind. Don't try and pump your your project up straight away. The next lot that we've got to glue together are these two pieces. Got to get them to fit first. There we go. Yeah, that's uh, it's quite a tight fit. That's how we like it. By the way, this is how not to use a Stanley knife. Or oh, in South Africa, we call it a Stanley knife. Um, I don't know. Around the world, it's probably a copper knife or <laughs> some other blade. Yeah. This 70 mils long. Another part of the gun that we're putting together is um, kind of getting the valve into some part of the gun. Um, now I've got this end cap, it's just a normal plastic end cap. What we're going to do is drill probably an 11 millimeter hole in there. And then we're going to try and thread this into that hole and hopefully it creates a seal. Now, what we can do is we can also probably put a little bit of um, our PVC glue uh, into the hole 
as we're threading it in and the glue will probably uh, just well hopefully the glue will soften up the PVC just a little bit to help the threads kind of uh, make themselves as we screw it in and also to seal the, the joint. I have a 10 millimeter and I actually need 11 millimeter for that um, and after well my next size up from a 10 is a 13 because I've broken the 11 and the 12 I haven't replaced them yet so we're going to use the scissors we've basically got uh, all of our pieces ready now so that's going to go in there this is going to go ah, one day there we go that's going to go in there the T piece is going to go on Oy. Didn't work too well. <laughs> the T piece is going to go on. The valve is going to go on. Our sort of end piece is going to go on. And then we need to put the barrel on. On the end of our barrel, we're going to have the, the muzzle, maybe. I don't know what it's called. I think it's called a muzzle. And then, oh, jingos. Last but not least is going to be our trigger and that is going to go in there and then we're ready to go Boom! yes well it's a little bit loose but but you get the point <laughs> yes oh. one of the important things that uh, we need to be aware of um, is the valve uh, that we're making with our little hockey puck um, now this isn't a hockey puck, this is a, I don't know, it's an old lid from something because the hockey puck is still drying. Um, I made it out of silicon. But just to show you guys, uh, what we need to do is we need to make sure that the edge uh, inside the, the barrel um, where the hockey puck is going to kind of seal up against, it's going to do that and move away and do that, move away. Um, and when it presses up against our barrel, it's going to create a seal. Now to create a seal, this edge, the edge that we cut, has got to be really smooth and nicely square. One way to do that is to take a piece of sandpaper on a flat surface. And what you can do is you can take your pipe and you put it down on the flat surface and you just move it around in circles. And then uh, well, you should be left with quite a flat surface. The surface is improving. We've still got a small cut line. Uh, that's from the blade that I was using. So we need to do more sanding once we can see we've got a nice flat surface um, we can get rid of the sort of the rough sandpaper I used 100 grit and I'm going to move over to 220 grit um, and that's just going to make the sort of the edge really nice and smooth cool bananas <laughs> time for the next step trigger mechanism or another base end well you're getting a bit of the glue's dripping inside there um, yeah it's uh, slowly coming together and I reckon within the next hour or so we'll be ready well not to fire the fire the gun but uh, it'll be in one piece and all glued together to the bottom of our barrel the inner barrel um, I've added these four stainless steel uh, cap screws so when this the inner barrel is glued inside the outer barrel this uh, end doesn't have any support so if you notice we've got our four allen head screws uh, or cap head screws there um, and those fit nicely into the, the outer barrel or inside so what that does is when we slide it in when it gets down to the bottom it's got got a lot of support and then it's got a second function as well if you look inside the barrel here um, you can see there's kind of a little cross there when we shove our t-shirt into the barrel we want to be able to shove it all the way down and then it's got to stop um, we don't want the t-shirt to be able to actually like push out inside and then possibly get caught I just used a six millimeter stainless steel cap screws drilled one two three four holes and uh, screwed them in and that should be that should be it 
we are basically finished now for the day and um, we've pretty much got to the end of the build. Um, almost at the end, there's still one more thing to do and that is to glue the, the trigger um, into, the, into the housing and then once we've done that the completed gun kind of looks like, looks like this. Um, it's got a barrel that is detachable. So there we go, that's the uh, completed gun. Um, the last thing we're going to do is glue our trigger in. Um, the reason I haven't glued this in yet is because once I've glued it in, I want to let it dry overnight without touching it um, so that it glues in nice and straight. It's the next day and uh, everything is now dry. Um, our handle is in or our trigger is, is in. And you'll also notice, haha, I've got a handle on it now. So I just put this handle on um, last night and uh, it's pretty simple. Just a little bit of pipe and some aluminium with a with a, a pipe hanger, gutter hanger type thing happening there. Um, but that's it. It's uh, feeling quite solid now. And uh, there's one thing that I didn't show you, and it's actually quite an important part of the build. Um, and that is this little silicon puck that I made. The silicon hasn't dried yet, so I had to try and come up with another plan because I really wanted to use this uh, this gun today. Um, so you can do that, it does work. What I did though is I just ran down to the hardware store again and I got one of these. Um, I think what this is, is it's like a pole cap or pipe blocker or something, uh, not too sure, but it fits, hang on let me show you. This thing fits really nice and snugly into the barrel. So that's perfect, that's, that's going to take the place of our silicon slug. So what I ended up doing is buying one of these kind of uh, rubber washers, I think it's for taps or something, I'm not too sure. Um, and I glued it onto the end of our pole cap, I just used contact adhesive. And then I also used uh, some of this stuff, this is just a really thin, um, I don't know, foam from the local craft shop. Um, I cut a small strip and I glued those small strips around these little grooves. So with that, this uh, this little piston now fits really nicely into the into the tube or into the barrel. This part here is now sitting right over there. Be sure to come back for the next video uh, where we'll be testing our nice beast. If you liked the video, uh, hit the little thumbs up button. Please leave comments in the comment section below. I'd really like to know what you guys think or how I can improve on the design. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Cheers.